Amen. Wasn't that beautiful? Yes, Christ is coming from an eye. Victory is nigh. If it is okay with the sound engineer, if I can get a little bit more volume on my monitor up here, I'll be happy. Um, just the monitor up here, if I get a little bit more volume on my monitor up, up on the stage, I'll be grateful. <clears throat> All right, beautiful. Boy, I, I just didn't just enjoy that song. I enjoyed the colors. Man, I was amazed by the colors. I had to, I had to record them. And I think folks who are watching from far um, were just amazed by the array of African colors. Uh, thank you, ladies. That was really a treat. And... Um, and for the gents as well. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So, so we're back again, amen, because we have some more work to do today. Hope you had a good rest last night, and um, we're ready to do some work this morning. <clears throat> I, um, if, it is, if it is okay with you, I'd like to, I'd like to continue on the second portion of your theme, the portion that says, get involved, get involved. Yesterday we spent all day looking at the coming of Christ and now we prepare for that. Today, both today, this morning and this afternoon, we'll talk about, get, I'm gonna focus a little bit on getting involved under the subject, call me Peter. Call me Peter. Your heads are bowed. Father, we remind ourselves that we can't open your words unless we ask for help. So one more time, Lord, I ask that you will send us the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit and as we open your words, I ask that you will help us, God, to understand your words, to apply them in our hearts, that our lives may be changed and your name might be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Permit me also to welcome my folks online, those of you who have gotten up out of your bed four o'clock in the morning to watch us here live from Nairobi. We want to welcome you. And for those of you in other parts of the world, we, we're delighted to have you. We hope that you'll be blessed as we, as we dive into the word of God. So, so by now you, you should know that I'm a troubled preacher. That there's some stuff in the Bible that troubles me badly. One of them is... One of them is to try and understand Jesus because there's some stuff that Jesus did that is still problematic for some of us. What do I mean by that? Well, well when Jesus came here, He decided that he is going to start a new movement. Yes? Yes. I, I had to remind myself that when Jesus came here, there was a church. Amen? There was a functioning church. It was headed by the chief priests and the elders. There are scribes and Pharisees. There was a functioning church. They worship every Sabbath. And they were serious about their worship. But strangely enough, when Jesus came here, who is supposed to be the head of the church, Hmm. Hmm. 
he had some problems with the church. And so when he decided to start his own ministry, mission, he needed a team around him. Is the church still with me? Yes, he needed a team around him. And he decided to handpick the people he wanted around him to be part of his team to get them involved. And you would have thought, wouldn't you, that if you're looking for a team to help you in ministry, you'd have, tr you'd have gone in the church. Amen? To look for the faithful members of the church. You'd have gone to find hardworking evangelists, dedicated deacons, faithful elders. Jesus chose 12 and not a single one of them was a member of the church. In his book, 12 Ordinary Men, John MacArthur says, he went into town and select 12 ordinary men. Not a single one of them was a Pharisee. Not a single one of them was a priest. Not a single one of them was a member of the church. They was, these were people, fishermen downtown, tax collectors, you name it. Twelve ordinary people he chose to be part of his team. And the question that we must ask ourselves is, por qué? Why? Why? So look at, follow, follow me this morning. So, so look at, look at, look at, look at, let, let's look at the team that Jesus chose with him. So he's going to do, he's starting a whole stuff here, preparing for his second coming, starting a church. And look at the team that he chose. Have you ever studied these guys? Interesting. So, so, some in the team, James and John, by the way, Jesus called them the sons of thunder. Oh, I don't know if there's anybody in Nairobi we can call that sons of thunder. Jesus, called, Jesus gave them that name. These were not guys to mess around with. Amen? These were not guys. These guys are serious guys. One day, you know, one day Jesus was in town and, um, and, and teaching and some folks didn't want to listen to Jesus and, and, and they came to Jesus. They said, Lord, do you think we should call down fire from heaven and burn up these Rascal, these are sons of thunder. These are not guys to mess around with, but it is them Jesus chose. Here's another one, Matthew. Matthew. Well, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew was a tax collector. And for those of you in Nairobi, it doesn't mean much. But back then it was tax collectors were the scumbags of society. They were the worst of the worst of the worst because these were Jews who were collecting tax from their fellow Jews to give to pay to the Romans who was oppressing them. Are you with me? Tax collectors were hated. So anytime you see the word tax collector in Bible, they were, they were bunched with sinners. Sinners and tax collectors. And it is these type of people Jesus picked up, one of the worst of them, put on his team. Then there was Judas. Then there was Judas. Jesus didn't actually handpick him, but he volunteered. Jesus didn't stop him. But of course, you know his track record. He was really a crook. Yet Jesus allowed him on the team. Amen? Because when we are getting ourselves involved to get people ready for the second coming of Christ, hey, everybody and anybody is invited to the team. And then, and then you have Thomas, who was a coward. Yeah, he's the, he's the guy who will talk much in the board meeting, but he's not doing anything. Yeah, you know those members? Oh, they have all the, they have the, all the talk, but they are the cowards. These are the people Jesus had on his team. 
Um, and then you have Peter. You have Peter. He's the most colorful of all of them. Peter. And so, the, oh man, for the next few moments, I'm going to ask you to just bear with me. Let me talk to, talk to you about him a little. Then you have Peter. In other words, put it this way. Put it this way. I, I, I doubt, I really doubt that if any of us in church this morning, if we were putting a team to go on the road to do evangelism, these are not the guys who would put on our team. Amen? Yes. Amen. And the message I want to communicate from day one is that God welcomes anybody and everybody on his team. The worst of the worst of the worst. So if you don't believe me, let me prove it with my good brethren, Peter. 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 Most of us, we have heard of Peter. But if you if you knew what Jesus knew about Peter, Peter would be the last person we would want on our team. So, let me let me break this down for you. When Jesus invited Peter to join the team, Jesus already knew Peter's weaknesses. Jesus already knew his shortcomings. Yes? But Jesus did not allow Peter's weaknesses or his shortcomings to prevent him from becoming part of the team, to prevent him from getting involved. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, if you and I happen to know some background information about Peter, I guarantee you we would bypass Peter. Peter would be the last person we put on the team. Let me put it where you can get it. If you knew that Peter is somebody you can't rely on when you are in trouble, I guarantee you you wouldn't put him on the team. If you knew that Peter would Peter would 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 deny you if you knew that that Peter that Peter would deny you at the time when you needed him most if you knew Peter is not somebody you could rely on when you're in trouble you would not put Peter on the team and the question then since Jesus knew that Peter was such a character that you really can't depend on him that when trouble comes he runs why did Jesus allow this guy to come on the team when he already know the weaknesses know the faults know the background of this person why What's going on? Ha! Huh. Not only, watch me, watch me, watch me. Not only, not only would Peter deny Jesus three times. We all know about that. But Peter is the only disciple out of the twelve that Jesus called a devil. Huh. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me see, let me, <laughs> let me see that one more time. Peter is the only disciple among the, as bad as Judas was. Peter is the only disciple among the twelve that Jesus called a devil. And so if you knew the man was a devil... Why did you allow him on the team? I'm gonna put a text, put up the text for you. I'm in Mark, I'm in Matthew chapter 16. I'm in verse 20. If you're just joining us on, if you just log on to Nairobi Central Camp Meeting, I'm under the subject, call me Peter. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21 says, From that time, Jesus began to show. To his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and he must suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes. Is the church with me? 
and he will be killed and he will be raised on the third day. So, so watch it. So Matthew says, Jesus gathered the folks around, right? Um, the disciples around, and he started telling the disciples, he says, hey guys, in a, in a little while, I, I will have to go to Jerusalem, and when I go there, um, things are not going to be nice. He says, um, the, 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 the church leadership in Jerusalem, the, the, the elders uh, and the chief priests and the scribes, I, I can tell you right up front, they, they are going to go against me, and uh, I'm just going to let you know what's going to happen. They are, I'm going to be killed but don't worry, I'll be, I'll be raised again. And the, and the 12 disciples were stunned to hear Jesus talking about this. So, so Peter, who always loved to talk before his brain goes into action, he, 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 he jumped up. <laughs> oh, Lord, mercy. He, he jumped up and he, and he took Jesus' hand and he took Jesus aside. Took Jesus aside. Took him out of the. T- <laughs> he, he, he took Jesus aside <laughs> because what Jesus is about, he's saying right here now, is not going down too well with Peter. So he took Pete Jesus aside, uh, and, and, he, and the Bible says, and the Bible says he began to do what? Rebuke Jesus. Now, what does the word rebuke mean? Anybody know? Talk, you can talk to me. You can talk to me. What does rebuke mean? Oh, you don't know? Okay. He started to reprimand. <laughs> he started to reprimand Jesus. Took Jesus aside and started to reprimand Jesus. He said, Jesus, in other words, he says, far be it from you. That's a nice way of saying it. In other words, in Nairobi, he says, shut up your mouth, Jesus. For, for what you just said a while ago, not a thing like that will happen to you. Ooh. He, 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 Peter, Peter decided to shut down God. Said, shut up your mouth, Jesus, for what you just said a while ago is pure garbage. Nothing like that will happen to you. Not as long as Peter is around. It won't happen to you. Peter rebuked God, the Son of God. And the text says, Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get, if Jesus is from Jamaica, <laughs> amen? Yeah, if Jesus is from Jamaica, uh, G, uh, yeah, 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 Jesus should have put his finger straight in his face and says, Get behind me, Satan. What? Get Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but what consumes you are the things of men, and yet still God keep him on the team. Yet still God wants him as a part of the team. Get behind me, Satan. This is the second time Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. The first time is when they were tested, when Satan tested Jesus in the wilderness. And Jesus looked at Peter. And I, I was fascinated by this text. So I went to research it. Yesterday, Bible commentary says, Satan. Watch this, watch this. Satan was talking through Peter. Ah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Satan infiltrated Peter and Satan was talking through Peter. Is the church with me? And and Peter did not even know that Satan had already infiltrated him and was talking to Jesus through Peter. So when, hey, 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 so, 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 Peter is not aware of what is happening to him spiritually. 
But when Jesus heard that voice talking to him, Jesus knew that that was Satan. So Jesus didn't address Peter. No, no, no. Jesus addressed Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Because even though it is Peter is in front of me, I know who just talked to me a while ago. How did Satan get on the team? Oh, you see why I'm a troubled preacher? How did Satan get on the team? Ellen White says Satan's purpose was to discourage Christ. And so Satan, without, listen to the preacher, without Peter being aware of what happened, Satan was already in control of him. And very often the same thing happens in the church of God. Among people who are part of the team. Satan is a master of infiltrating the team. And tends to use one or two hey, to discourage the team. But I want you to notice how Jesus dealt with it. Ah. <laughs> he rebuked Satan, get behind me, for you are an offense to me. Hey, is the church still with me? You're an offense to me, uh-huh, uh-huh, for you are mindful of what? Of the things of God. You are not mindful of the things of God, but you are mindful of what? Of the things of men. So, I want you to talk to me. Should we... Should we expel Peter from the team? Is Peter disqualified? Elder, can we still keep him? Is it, hey, hey, is it safe? Is it safe to keep Peter on the team? Now that we know that the, a, the devil has spoken through him? Is it say, or should we take a vote? To re oh Lord, help us in the church. To remove him from the team? Hey, hear, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Something, something has gone wrong with Peter. And something is happening to Peter. And I hope as I unpack this message, you can take it home to your own experience and to your own church and to your own circumstances because it's a message for us. Something has got, something, something, something is happening to Peter. Something is happening to Peter. Something deadly and spiritual is happening to Peter that the naked eye can't see. Something is happening to Peter, to a member of the team. Here, here's what the text says. Here, here, here's the text. I, I mean... I'm in Luke 22, verse 31. Jesus called Peter and said, Simon, Simon, indeed, look at the text, say, oh Lord of mercy, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as a wheat. Hold on, brother preacher. This is serious stuff. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Have, have you seen the text? Jesus called Peter. You know, the other day, the other day, the other day, Peter took Jesus aside. No, it is Jesus to take, it's time to take Peter aside. He says, Peter, I, I can see what you can see, and I know what you don't know, but I'm going to share this stuff with you. Satan ask for you. Hold on. Hold on, virgin. We can't move on. What does Jesus mean when Satan ask for Peter? Ask who? Ask who? 
It, remi it, <laughs> it reminds me of Satan and Job. Remember that story? Yes. Satan could not touch Job unless he asked permission. Are we together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus came to Peter and said, hey, Peter, I'm going to tell you what's happening. You don't know this, but I have intel on you. Satan has asked for you. In other words, there are, watch me, watch me, watch the preacher, watch the preacher, watch me. There are 12 of you on the team, and it is you Satan wants. Hey, 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 you still don't get it. Let me put it, let me talk to the choir. Let me talk to the choir. The one that Satan got is not the one that Satan wanted. Oh, you still don't get it. Let me talk to the elders over here. Let me talk. The one that Satan got is not the one he wanted. Who did he get? He got Judas, but who did he want? Peter he wanted. Come on, if you were Satan and you have a choice between Judas and Peter, which of them would you choose? Oh, come on, come on, talk to me. Which of them would you choose? It's not Judas Jesus wanted. Um, Satan wanted. No, he, hey, 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 he had to, hey, he had to settle with Judas. He had to settle with Judas, but it's not Judas he wanted. He wanted the brightest of the pact. He wanted the best that Jesus had. Is the church with me? When he comes into Nairobi, central, he don't want no, no little man or woman who don't have any use. No, he wants the brightest in the church. He wants the best in the church. He wants the most effective member of the church. He wants Peter. Uh, uh, Judas is what we call in Jamaica, what left? Oh Lord. No wonder, no wonder when you when you look around, some of the bright people in the church, some of these brightest, most effective young people that are doing so well, all of a sudden they fall to their face. And you wonder how one of God's earth such person fall? Because Satan is after them. They 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 tell me moths. Moths are attracted to bright lights. Moths are attracted to bright lights. When there are bright lights in the church, ah, Satan, Satan like a roaring lion. You're from Africa, you know how lion spouts couch on a little horizon and look over the, over the landscape and spot the prey. Every one of you who have decided to make a commitment to God and are faithful and are true and are dedicated and are effective, though you may have your fault, you must understand it is you Satan wants. Satan has... <laughs> so of, of the 12, hey, by the way, there's, there's crooked Judas, you could take him. There's Matthew the tax collector, you could take him. There's coward Thomas, you could take, no, 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 we want Peter. So Jesus says, Satan asks for you that he may sift you as a weed. Ha, help me read, church of God. But, come on, help me read. One, two, three. But I have prayed for you. Can the church say amen? amen. Yeah, in other words, not Again, a little Jamaican language. Not under my dead body am I going to let Peter go in your hands. Do you guys use that phrase here? Under my dead body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Jesus says, hey, hey Peter, uh, the devil wants you, but I'm going to tell you something. I have prayed for you. Amen. And the prayer of Jesus will hold you against any attack of the enemy. Somebody in the church need to say, Lord, pray for me. Pray for me. Because I'm signing up to get involved. Yeah. And I need the prayer you pray. Hey, hey, hey. The prayer you pray for Peter 
remove Peter's name and put. Oh, come on. How, how many of you want to say, Lord, the prayer you pray for Peter, remove Peter's name and put my name. My name, my name, my name. Because when Jesus pray for you, ain't no weapon form against you can prosper. So there's a, by now, you realize now, there's a war over Peter. There's a war. Oh, Lord of mercy. There's a war over Peter. I have prayed for you. The text says, and when you have, King James Version says, when you are converted. This is a new King James Version. When you have returned to me. What? Look at the text. When you have what? So where is he gone? <laughs> Where is he gone? Satan took over Peter so much. Took him away. Peter was on a slippery, sliding slope. Going down. And Jesus spotted it. He says, Peter, I've got to put you on notice. The, all the gates of hell are against you. That's why you are messing up so much. But I'm not letting you go. No matter how bad you blunder. Hear the preacher. No matter how bad you blunder. No matter how many mistakes you have made. I am not letting you go. So he says, I'm going to pray for you, Peter. Because you're valuable to me. Hey! You are valuable to me. I'm going to pray for you. And when you have returned, when you are converted, when you get back your strength, when you connect back to me, then go and strengthen your brethren. Because I tell you, the devil is going to go after them also. There's a fight for Peter. The devil not giving up and God not giving in. So, 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 so Jesus decided, I'll pray for you. And then, Jesus put in a request for Peter with a prayer. And then Jesus did something else to help out Peter. He said, Peter, along with the prayer, oh Lord, along with, along with the prayer, I have a little strategy to help you out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dispatch a rooster. <laughs> Lord help us. I'm going to put in place a rooster at the right time and at the right place to save your soul. Whoa, 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 hang on. Peter said to him, Lord, Lord, you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> I, this, this guy is something else. He says, Lord, you don't have to worry about me. I am, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. I promise you that. And Jesus said, Peter, I want to tell you something. The rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me. How many times? Three times that you know me. What, where, where's this rooster coming from, Jesus? Oh, <laughs> I can foresee what's happening down the road. Watch the preacher. I'm going to put in place, amen, something to rescue your soul. Wow. Oh, you still don't get it. You still don't get it. Let me, let me put it where you can get it. Had it not been for the rooster, Peter would probably have lost his soul. Oh, how oh, hang on, hang on. So in my sermon, when I read it, I said, thank God for the rooster. Oh, you still don't get it. Let me give you, let me give you the word. I'm in John chapter 18, verse 25. I mean, this is Peter's greatest blunder. I mean, John chapter 18, verse 25. The Bible says, now Simon Peter stood warm himself. This is after the, the, this is the trial of Jesus. Come on, you know the text, right? This is the trial of Jesus. 
They took him from Mount Olivet. They carried him to Caiaphas' house. And they are interrogating him in Caiaphas' house. This is early Friday morning. Very cold like Nairobi cold. Dew is still on the grass. Early in the morning. Sun don't even come up as yet. They, so they had him in Caiaphas' house all night. Early morning. Very cold. And so Peter, Peter, who, Peter who was among them when they arrested Jesus got scared and so the bible says he followed as the as the soldiers captured jesus and took him down to caiaphas's house peter followed from a distance poor guy amen want to see what happened but not willing to risk risk his life so he followed from a distance and he saw the that they had him brought him inside caiaphas's house so out on the porch on the yard the rest of the crowd gathered and there Peter came because somebody make a little fire to keep themselves warm in the early morning. And Peter, and Peter who was freezing, not just physically but spiritually, came to warm himself by the fire. And when he, when, he, when he came by the fire, rubbing up his two hands together and getting himself warm, therefore somebody said to him, hey, think I know your face. I know your face. <laughs> you, are, you are not also one of his disciples, aren't you? I think I know your face. And Peter, <laughs> and Peter denied it and said, no, I'm, you're making a mistake. I'm, I'm not. I may look like the guy. <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm not. I'm not. By the way, somebody already identified him and he denied it this is the second time he's denied i mean verse 26 now one look at the text look at the text look at the text look at the text one of the servants of the high priest a relative of him whose ear peter cut off Because you remember, when they tried to arrest Jesus in Mount Olivet, Peter drew his sword and chopped off Malchus' ears. You remember that? And Jesus put it back on. Yeah, that's what your Bible says. So what the text is telling us, one of Malchus' relative <laughs> came and said, but we know this guy. We know this guy. You know, Peter must have the hood. You know, man. Rub it up his hand, have the hood over his face, yeah, because he's also he wants to get he wants to get the warmth of the fire, but he doesn't want to expose himself. So the hood works well. And, and, and a guy look, the guy look under the wood and says, "I know this fellow. Didn't I see you? Watch this. Didn't I see you in the garden with this man? Evidence." Peter denied it again third time and as he did the third time immediately the rooster goes you know what they told me they told me they told me when people are drowning they go down three times have you ever heard about that you didn't know that yeah 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 they go down and they come up they go down and they come up if they go down the third time that's it that's it this guy, have you heard three strikes and you're out? Yes, three strikes and you're out. First time, first time the guy lied. He knew he lied. But he could not, he didn't have what it is to sacrifice himself for the Lord. So he got another opportunity to correct the first lie. But he lied again. And he got a third chance to correct two lies. And he lied again. And when he lied again, God placed a rooster. God, hear the preacher. God in his goodness, God in his mercy, God in his grace placed a rooster. And that rooster crowed just at the time when Jesus said he would crow. 
And why is that significant, Brother Preacher? Because the Bible says when Peter, when Peter heard, when Peter saw, heard the rooster crow, he remembered that Jesus gave him the warning. And, and, and he looked, hey, hey, Ellen White jumps in the picture. Uh, Ellen White says, he looked on Jesus and Jesus looked back at him. They had a 20-20 vision. And right away, Peter's heart turned upside down because he knew then that he messed up big time. He could not live with himself. This half ages. Ellen White says, Peter, turn away. Wept like a child. Blinded by his tears, he staggered all the way back to the garden of Gethsemane and threw himself down in the wet dew and he begged God forgiveness. The sound of the rooster was in his ears. He begged God. Forget, if you take a drone and do an aerial shot of the Garden of Eden, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, you would see Peter down there in the wet grass weeping. God, I messed up. God, I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up, Jesus. Please forgive me. He wept. He wept. He wept. He wept. All morning, we didn't see Peter again until Sunday morning at the resurrection. And I asked my question, the question, where have all the roosters gone? Because I, I think, I think the church needs some more Roosters. Hey, where have all the roosters gone? Because we need, we need more roosters to crow when we mess up. Is the church with me? To crow when we blunder. To, grow, to, to, to crow when we, when we sleep in the bed that we should not be sleeping. Where are all the roosters? To grow when we lie, when we should not be lying. And steal when we should not be still. Where are all the roosters when we say bad things about each other? Where are all the roosters? When members of the team blunder. Hey, somebody need to say, God, I, I, I need a personal. Come on, help me preach. I need a personal. Help me preach. I need a personal. Rooster to crow when I blunder. I need a personal rooster because we are no better off than Peter. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, the same way the devil infiltrate Peter, he can infiltrate any one of us. And unless we have a personal rooster to crow, then we are at his mercy. And I'm saying to the church this morning, the same way God provided a rooster for Peter, he has one provided for you. Amen. How many of you say, Lord, give me my personal rooster? Yes, Jesus. Because sometimes it's hard. It's hard to stand up for you. Sometimes it's hard. Give me a personal rooster and let him crow every time I mess up. So like Peter, I can go back to the Garden of Gethsemane and ask forgiveness personal rooster well let me wrap this up and, and send you home fascinating stuff fascinating stuff Jesus is not letting go Jesus is not letting go so follow the preacher follow the preacher follow the preacher we left we left Peter weeping in the garden of Gethsemane. He don't know what's happening downtown with Jesus. They try Jesus. They crucify him. He died Friday evening. Follow the preacher. And Peter knew. Stay with the preacher.
Peter knew that the man he offended is dead. And so there was no time for makeup or forgiveness. Is the church with me? Stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. After asking forgiveness in the Garden of Gethsemane, he would love the opportunity to talk it over with Jesus to make it right because his heart is now genuine. Is the church with me? But now Jesus is dead. Whoa. Am I forgiven? I don't know. Because Jesus is, is dead. So, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, when Mary went to the tomb and found it empty, the text says she ran back to Peter. And when Pete and woke up, Peter said, Peter, the tomb is empty. And the text says, Peter, run to the tomb with great excitement, hoping he can find Jesus to work out the stuff with him. There was no Jesus. Disappointed. He went back. He and John went back to their room. No Jesus. Mary lingered. Because she, she decides she's not leaving this tomb until she finds Jesus. And because she lingered there, still crying, says Ellen White in the book, These Half Ages, she saw an image and she thought it was the gardener. And she said to the gardener, where have you laid him? Tell me so I can get his body. And the, and the, person, and the person says, Mary? And when she heard the voice of Jesus, she knew it was, she said, Rabboni. And she went to hug up Jesus. And Jesus gave her a message. You know the message. Don't touch me. I've not yet gone to my father. But that's not the part I'm interested in. After that, Jesus says, go and tell my disciples and Peter. Go and tell my disciples and Peter that I'm alive. Ooh. 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 You can mess up against God. You can do all the stuff against God. God is not going to keep malice with you. And Peter. Well, Peter didn't see him that day. So he's still not sure whether things are well with his soul. Is the church with me? Stay with me. Still not sure. So the Sunday morning, following Sunday morning, the text says Peter and a couple of the guys went fishing. Peter says, I'm depressed. I'll go back to my old job. And they went fishing. Is the church with me? They went fishing. And they, all night, they caught nothing. Stay with me. I'm still under the subject. Call me Peter. They caught nothing. They rowed their boat coming in the Sunday morning. Row, row, row your boat gentle down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. They, they row their boat in. And they are so depressed, all of them, because the church mashup, Jesus is dead, there's no future. And, and, and Peter is still struggling about how he messed up. And he has not yet gotten the opportunity to, to make it up with God. And it is still killing him inside. So even though he asks forgiveness, he's not too sure because he hasn't got the chance to talk to God. And as they came in from a night of failure, they look on the seashore and they saw a little smoke, says John. Chapter 21, they saw a little smoke on the seashore. And as they came a little closer, they saw an image. And when they look carefully, it was the resurrected Jesus on the seaside with a fire going. Ha! The text says, Jesus rose fish, rose fish, rose fish. That's nice. You guys have roast fish? Jesus roast fish and bread on the fireside. In other words, he made 
breakfast for those guys coming in. Is the church with me? Because he knew they were out all night. He knew they were hungry. He knew they were depressed. He knew they were a state of emotion. And he made breakfast. Hey, somebody need to shout out the hallelujah. He made breakfast for them. They came in with the boat. Stay with the preacher. They came in with the boat. And Jesus broke the bread and gave them and fish. And they, and they ate. And, the, and Ellen White says, they ate in silence. And then, <laughs> Peter, don't want to look on Jesus. Because you know he's guilty. You know when people are guilty, they don't want to look at you? Is that true in Nairo? Because that's true back home. So you don't want, you don't want to look at Jesus. So he's, he's eating. And Jesus broke the silence. So when they had eaten breakfast, I'm in John 21. Jesus broke the silence. And Jesus, hey, 11 of them, you know, you know, because Judas is gone. 11 of them, there. And it is, notice who Jesus addressed. Who did he address? Peter, Peter, Peter. Yeah, he singled out Peter. Hey, because he knew there was some unfinished business between him and... Peter. So he broke the silence and he says, Simon, Simon, Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you, <laughs> hey, now you understand, Simon, in the presence of these, these your fellow, do you love me? More, and what word did I underline? More than the rest of the guys eating with you. Why did you ask me that? Oh, I can tell you, because they did not deny me. Mm -hmm. Do you love me more than Matthew, James, and John. Do you love me more than them? Do you love me more than them? Because they at least didn't mess up. But you mess up so big. Do you, in spite of your messing up, do you love me? And he said, softly, full of guilt and embarrassment, he said, yes, Lord. You know, oh, Jesus you know that I love you. The others could hardly hear him. So Jesus said, okay, <laughs> watch this. Feed, feed my, let me read, feed my, feed my lambs. What? Are you sure? And Jesus said to him, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. Talk a little louder now. Yes, Lord, you know, you know that I love you. Jesus says, tend to my sheep. The, the, the rest of the disciples wondering, what's going on? Why Jesus not talking to us? Why only Peter alone? And Jesus said, the third time, third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter get angry. <laughs> oh Lord, help Peter. Peter get angry. And Peter says, God, Lord, you know I love you. Not because I mess up. It doesn't mean I love you, Jesus. Don't use that to mean I don't love you. Yes, I mess up and I forgive. But I still love you with all my heart. Not because I messed up. Meaning I should be off the team. Not because I messed up. Meaning I'm not qualified. To serve my Lord. Not because I blunder. Meaning I can't serve God. And he, said to the, and he said to him. Lord you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him for the third time. Feed. My sheep. Three times he denied Jesus. Three times Jesus restored him. 
Three times he denied Jesus. Three times he blundered. Three times Jesus restored him. And by the way, and by the way, those of you church members, listen to this, listen to this carefully. Jesus restored him in the presence of his enemies. Oh, you didn't get it. Yes, 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 yes. Because you see, when Jesus is gone, the question is who's going to lead the church? And the last person they're going to choose is the man who... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That man will have no part in this church because this man, we can't rely on this man. So Jesus made sure that he restored him in the presence of his enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Hallelujah! Jesus will never give up on Peter. Never give up on Peter. Three times, three times he messed up. Three times. He restored him. Jesus saw something in Peter that Peter didn't even see in himself. Oh, what did Jesus say? He's, even, though, even though the devil tried to use him, he's the only disciple that walk on water. Not only disciple. He's the only living human being that had enough faith that walk on water. Ha! Jesus says, no, 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 no. Yeah, you mess up sometimes, but I need you on my team. Come on, can the church say amen? Yeah, you blunder sometimes, but I need you on my team. Because Jesus saw something in him. Hey, hear the preacher. Let me wrap this up for you. Let me wrap this up for you. Jesus is resurrected and gone back to heaven. Now, Acts chapter 2, day of Pentecost came. Holy Ghost came down. Peter was in the room. And the Bible says, the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, Peter got up and decided to address the crowd. And, and in Bible, and the book of Acts says, when Peter was finished preaching, 3,000 people got baptized one day. Peter! Now you understand why the devil wanted him. Peter was the pastor of the church. Filled with the Holy Ghost when Ananias and Sapphira came in with your rubbish hey, and being and coming to deceive the church, they dropped dead in front of Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. Oh, can I can I tell you how Peter became such a powerful child of the living God? They lock him in prison. And in midnight, he started singing, God sent an angel down to take him out. Hey, lead him out of prison. Peter! It's a good thing we didn't vote to take him off the team. Peter. Peter got, Peter got so powerful under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The, the text says, the text says, so that they brought the sick out in the streets, laid them on beds and couches that at least, can me read, at least, at least the shadow, at least the shadow of Peter passing by may fall on them. Call me Peter. Call me Peter. I'm not perfect. Not perfect. Sometimes when I should have stood up for the Lord, I faltered. Amen. But I'm not giving up on God. I still want to be involved. Yeah. When I look over my life, it has not been perfect. But God has not given up on me. Amen. And he will not give up on you. Because he wants you to be part of his team. And so here's my call to you this morning. Here's my call to you this morning. You know there's a little song in the hymnal that says, I've wandered far away from God now I'm coming home I'm going to sing that song I want to sing that song
And I want to say to this congregation, none of us in this church is perfect. All of us have blundered sometime in our life. But I thank God he didn't give up on Peter and he's not going to give up on you. So I'm going to open this altar again. I'm going to open this altar again. I'm going to, I'm going to open this altar for somebody, anybody. Anybody who who has deep in your soul a desire to serve the Lord with all your mind. But like Peter, there have been some obstacles in your life. There are some challenges in your life. You wonder, God, can you use me? Can you use me? Because I, I want to, I want to be part of the team. Not perfect, but I, I want to be part of the team. And I'm asking you, Jesus. I want, I want a personal rooster. I want a personal rooster. I want, I, I want a personal rooster, Lord. I, I want you to help me so that, like Peter, I can find my way back home. I can reconnect with you. I can get my sins forgiven. I can get pardoned. I can get my name cleared. Like Peter, I want to be reestablished. I just don't want to do it privately as you did it with the disciples around Peter I want everybody around this church and everybody to know that I've recommitted my life to the Lord Jesus I'm going to invite this congregation to stand with me stand with me stand with me stand with me stand with me, stand with me. Stand with me. we're going to sing that song I'm going to invite my pastors to come on up as we did yesterday. I'm going to open the service in the name of Jesus. Call me Peter. Because Lord, I made mistakes like Peter. But you never give up on Peter. So don't give up on me. I invite you to come and join us as we sing. Come and join us. Come and join us. Walk down this altar. Give your hand to the hand of God. I've walked Come and join us. Come and join us. God. God bless you, my children. Come. Come and join us. God bless you. 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 God, bless you. God I need you. I need you. Come and join us. Coming on, Jesus. Come and join us, come and join us, come and join us. God is calling you, come and join us. Need a personal rooster, God. I need a personal rooster. 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 Crow when I messed up. Need a personal rooster. God bless you. God bless you. Come, 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 come. Reconnect with Jesus. Reconnect with Jesus. Seek forgiveness. God bless you. Seek forgiveness. I see some folks on the balcony. Come on down. Yes, Jesus. I'm coming home, Lord. I'm coming home, Lord. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Come. Come, 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 come. Lord, I'm coming. Amen. Amen. And bring your children along. Bring your children along. We're going home, Jesus. From time to time, we mess up. We let God down, but God says, I'm not giving up on you. 
God bless you, God bless you. Not giving up on you, not giving up on you. Come. 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 Come from the balcony. Come. Lord, I'm coming. God bless you, my sister. She's coming. Is here another? 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 Come. Now I'm coming. Jesus says, I want you on my team. Want you on my team. I want you on my team. Get involved. Come. Come, come. Your faith is not too strong. Come. Messed up along the way. Come. God bless you for the children who are coming. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Is there another? God bless you. Is there anybody else on the balcony? You hear the preacher. Yeah, the preacher. I, I must wrap this up. You didn't come into this church by accident. God brought you here. God brought you here. The Lord brought you here. Come. If you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, come. There are some struggles in your life. Come. Yes, God bless you, my God bless you. Yes, Jesus, God bless you. I'm coming home. See another. See another man somewhere, another woman somewhere. Spirit of the Lord brought you in the church. Come. Sing open wide. I don't have to wrap this up, but I want to talk just for one minute more in case you misunderstand me. If you are in this church today, it is not by accident. It is by divine design. God brought you here for a purpose to rescue you as he did Peter. The voice of this preacher may very well be your rooster. The voice of this preacher may very well be your rooster. This may be your call. This may be your final call to make it right with your God. In the name of Jesus, don't leave this service today unless you have demonstrated to God that I surrender to you. And so I invite you, come. If all is not well with your soul, come. If you are not certain of your soul's salvation, come. Yes, you may have some stuff in your background that you wonder, will God forgive you? Come. This is the call. When Peter lied the third time, the rooster crowed. That was his signal to start repentance right away. 
This is the call for you. I don't know who God is appealing to. This may be the very last sound of the rooster for you to turn around your life and come home before it is too late. So hear the preacher this morning. Come, save your soul. If all is not well with you, come. We're going to sing that last stanza. Whether you're on the balcony or you're on the back, in the name of Jesus, come. The Spirit of God brought you here to save your soul. This may be the final cry of the rooster asking you to come home before it is too late. Yes, you did some stuff, but God is willing to forgive you as he forgave Peter. Come! If you don't do that, God can't save you. So I'm going to invite you to step out of your seat and come. Put your hand in the hand of the man that calmed the sea. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Let's sing our last stanza. I need his cleansing blood, I know. Now I'm coming home. As they sing, come, come, come. Come, come, the last call. I need his cleansing, blood I know. Now I'm coming home. Last call, last call. I need his God bless you. cleansing, blood, God bless you. blood I know. Come, now come. I'm coming Not yet give me a heart to the Lord, come. Not yet being baptized, come. Maybe you were baptized, but somehow you had messed up on the road. Come, save your soul. Give it to Jesus. Surrender to him. Come. Come Come. Never more to roll. Never more to roll. Never more to roll. Never more to roll. Open wide. Come. Now I'm coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And the others, God bless you. Come. Come. to read it a couple times Jesus told Peter Satan ask for you what Satan put in a request for you do, do you guys feel sometime like Satan asks for you he's on your back would not let you go ask for you what an audacity. But Jesus says, but I pray for you. I pray for you. Please, pardon me a little. Deep down in my soul, there is still yet another person in this congregation that Satan has asked for. 
He wants you. He wants you. He wants you. And Jesus is not willing to let you go. And so this morning, if you feel that tug in your heart, if you feel that struggle in your soul, it is a war over your heart. You need to give God that victory by yielding up to Him. He says, God, I am not perfect, but deep in the recesses of my soul, I am committed to serve you, but I sense the devil is after me. Sometimes I get fearful, Lord. I sense the enemy is after me. So I'm coming to you this morning to hide under the shadow of your almighty wings. I don't know who that describes, but if that describes you, come, 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 because I'm lingering for you. Come, come. I don't know who that describes. Come, come. You sense the devil is after you, but in the name of Jesus, you're not giving up. You're not giving up, Jesus. I'm not giving up. Not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. He's on my back, but I'm not giving up. Trip me up here, trip me up there, but I'm not giving up. God bless you. Not giving up. Not giving up. Pray for me, Jesus. Pray for me. Pray for me. Because I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not giving up. I'm going to remain on this team. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to do my best. I'm not giving up. God, I may, I may let you down every now and then, but I'm not giving up. Come, come. If that describes you, come. Come, come. If that describes you, come. It's a war over our souls. War over our souls. Satan asks for you, but I'm not giving you up. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you did some bad stuff, but I'm not giving you up. Yeah, you lie when you're not supposed, but I'm not giving you up. Yeah, you break the Sabbath sometime, but I'm not giving you up. Yeah, I'm not giving you up. Not giving you up. I'm not giving you up. Is there another before we close? Is there another before we close? My final call. My final call. Is there another before we close? Final call. church say amen I want to give God thanks for those who have come forward I'm going to hand over to my host pastor to pray for us to give God thanks for those who came forward to take us from there sing hallelujah hallelujah We thank you, gracious Father in heaven. We all listen to this message. But these of your children who have made their way to the altar here, they identify with Peter. They love you. They heard your voice as you call them to come to work together with you. But even as they have been serving together with you, somehow the devil found his way into their lives. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they never knew the evil one has taken residence in their lives. And they have been rebuking you and talking to you, discouraging your work, but your grace has been sufficient. Even as we may have felt as a people, they are not worth continuing serving you, your grace has been sufficient. 
And so long this afternoon, they came out seeking for a reconciliation with you. Yes. And Lord, I stand in the gap this moment to plead with your grace. That blood of Jesus that is sufficient to cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. I pray that this afternoon, my Father, you may accept them and cleanse them and have a new beginning with them. The heaviness of the heart, take it away. Give them assurance that you know their case. And you organized for this great meeting and brought them here this morning because you knew this would be a turning point in their lives. Mm -hmm. Write their names anew in the books of life. Mm -hmm. Strengthen them, Lord, and I pray that what the evil one may have taken away from them, you may return it, Lord, and give them a new zeal to work for you in truth and in spirit. Just like of Peter. I pray for them that they may feed your flock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.